Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Mr. Dogbot 333 and welcome back to Heart Divine for the New Order Last Days Europe. Excuse me, as Jolly Old England. Now, last time we were here together, well, we started working on some army stuff, and I believe we just about finished up. Uh, the inner party stuff. The party's still a fucking disaster. Let's not get it uh, twisted. Uh, but what are we gonna do? Uh, what we are gonna do? Um, I don't know exactly where we were supposed to leave off, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the far north in Scotland. Start with Edinburgh. The ancient capital of Scotland, Edinburgh, now chafes under the heels of the British government. Where once it was one. One of the greatest cities in Scotland, now Edinburgh, is dom dominated by slums. Poverty walks the streets, and resentment against London gushes through the air. The police and soldiers stationed in the city keep their eyes and ears open. However, German jackboots and their British lapdogs patrol the streets, keeping the city tightly pressed. London rules Scotland, and Germania rules London. And the Scots will not soon forget it. That was quick, so let's check out Glasgow real quick. That's a lot longer, wow. One of the first cities in Euro of Europe to reach a population of one million, Glasgow, has fallen from the heights it attained in the 19th century. In those days, new trades and sciences attract immigration and the greatest architectural masterpieces, such as the Subway, Mitchell Library, Kelvington Park, Kelvin Grove Park, excuse me, and the Milngavie water treatment plants had their beginnings. This was not to last. Recession in the 1910s, followed by the Great Depression in the 20s and 30s, led to the rise of radical socialism, the Red Clydeside movement. The city's recovery by the outbreak of World War II was disrupted first by Luftwaffe bombings and then the imposition of the collaborations regime in London. In what is best called an unofficial modern-day ghetto, Glasgow is now a city where the only thing sent from the south from London is increasing numbers of po police. The Clyde Bank Blitz did little harm, but the British government's deliberate choice not to support Glasgow has done much more to push the city into decline. With tensions in Britain threatening to boil over yet again, Clydesdale might yet rise again. Red in tooth, ma, and claw. Threatening. Enjoy the, the, the spirit of it. Let's check out Dundee. Jute. Jam in journalism. Three words, three hearts. This is what has come to define the port city of Dundee, Scotland. And what continues to keep it alive, even as Britain cries under the jackboot. Whilst in another time, the jute mills would have kept in silence by foreign competition, they continued to creak and whimper indefinitely, feeding the ch its cheap rope and textiles to the military power that starved its people 20 years ago. Whilst the city's publishing houses once brought truth to the people of a once great country, and not only bring the... Spiels, mil man Spiels manufactured in Germania for the benefit of none but Downing Street or the Pact. It's a city that bitterly tastes defeat. However, it is said that hope still exists here. The people of Dundee have never been known to give up without a fight. If you were to find yourself in some pati particular back alley, you may even stumble upon a domestic printing of the Washington Post. If you were to find yourself in a more peculiar place, you may find what replaced the jam in Dundee, the blood of garrison troops. Dundee may have three black hearts now, but its soul still fights, and when the time comes, it may yet be able to bring joy to its people once more. That's kind of metal. Let's get better guns going. I want to check my economy, see how we're doing. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. We got a wonderful surplus going. When Ben told his mother of his intention to join the army, a flurry of emotion swam through her eyes. Shock, fear, and sadness were all visible before we finally settled in anger. Her face was met with, his face was met with a sharp slap. What the hell do you think you're talking about, you stupid boy? You can't join the bloody military! You're barely out of school, for goodness sakes! Knocked off kilter by the unexpected smack, Ben quickly snapped back. Oh, and I'm old enough to work in some dingy old factory all day, am I? At least this way I'm not wasting my life. And I'm actually doing something for once. She scoffed, folding her arms. A waste of a life, is it? Is that what you think about your dad? Did he waste his life then? Silence fell over the mother and son, as the unspoken presence of the missing family member made itself known. She put her hands over his eyes and began to sob gently. <laughs> not you too, Ben. I can't lose you too, I can't. 
Ben's expression softened, and he pulled his mother into a farm hug. Mom, I swear that I'll be back. I promise you, he said, lightly patting her on the back. I'm gonna come home, and we'll be much better off, alright? She could only sniffle in response. Regardless, he had already signed up. He was due to be heading to basic training in a few days. All birds need leave the nest eventually. Um... Let's do a tax cut. You know, we gotta do something to keep our uh, people happy. Let's cut the taxes. I'm sure that'll be okay. We got corporatism. It's all coming together, slowly but surely. Fall of Chief Executive Suzuki. R.I.P. Bozo. Man, I just remembered how much fun I had with uh, Guangdong. Uh, if you haven't played Guangdong, uh, uh, one check out my series is actually a lot of fun. And to uh, go ahead and play it, it's phenomenal. American degeneracy continues to spread. Takagi elected in Japan. This guy remaining the f Prime Minister. Interesting. Uh, let's get working towards Wolf's Trust. So our government relies on a great garrison allies for our defense and looks to the garrison more and more. Rudolf Wolf has grown more and more confident in our eternal faith in his abilities. Our reliance on the Germans to look after the lands while we focus on more important issues has led to Wolf's presence in cabinet meetings grow more and more typical. Yet this influence offers us a major advantage, as Wolf sees our d defense plans hinge more and more on him. His trust in the government can only skyrocket, allowing for a more trustworthy German garrison, meaning not only more security within the realm, but in our own government. With such grand friends in the German army, what does our government have to fear? The old guard is set control of the party, that's what I like to see. We'll get a little more control of the corporations. Eh, fuck off, pragmatists. Um, let's work on building more prisons. That sounds right. Um, Canada owns Bermuda, that's interesting. Gods of the North, the Father, the Nonsense. He doesn't need that content anymore, he doesn't count. Get him out of here. Wolf's Trust. Next, let's give him free reign on the countryside. Why the fuck not? As the garrison takes control of more and more of our defenses, we must now turn to allowing them to move against the resistance once more. To test the validity of their methods and avoid unnecessary casualties, we shall test them in the countryside. War McLean's merry men lie in wait, preparing for their foolish revolution. We must put now put our utmost face in them and allow them to do anything they can even if it be unsavory and brutal methods, to finally root out the resistance and restore stability to the British Isles. Um, I've been on a TNO kick today. Um, I, I streamed for the first time in a bit. Uh, I think I talked about before how I didn't have internet, but I got my internet restored, and I went ahead and I recorded some TNO, uh, the Ukraine content, which I am greatly enjoying, I gotta say. The... Ukrainian content is excellent. Been very much enjoying it, I gotta say. It looks like these guys... Interesting. Okay, so this looks like it's gonna be the, uh... The Republic one. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Um, I'm actually enjoying Ukraine a lot. I'm um, doing that on stream, which by the time this is out, I'm still probably going to be recording it. I've recorded the first five parts or so, but I'm going to wait probably until I finish recording and uploading 
the Afghanistan series of Kaiser Redux before I upload this. Uh, before I upload uh, that, the Ukraine stuff. Uh, so you still have some time to check it out, although it might be horribly behind, so you might just want to wait until it's recorded and upload it. Uh, that's up to you, though, of course. Um... Jonathan could feel a bullet scraping the concrete next to him. He'd taken defensive position in Old Bunker, turned base of the resistance, and the fascists were outside the door. He fired a shot, only be answered by ten more, each one getting closer like the footsteps of a pursuing predator. These are not the king's soldiers or some government militia formed at the last minute. These look more like German invaders, the ones who had taken everything he ever loved uh, over twenty years ago. Yet, the Union Jack patches out on their uniforms signified something other, perhaps something worse. They were the British Free Corps, an extension of Germany's hand on the Isles, and staff are the worst traitors and fascists Britain could offer. Jonathan had heard rumors of them, government forces struggling to keep things in order, but then the BFC came, and all was done in a day, leaving nothing but bullet holes and smoke. Let me check. A new portrait for Lamas, okay. Before he could even turn and plead with the captain for an attempt at a retreat and escape, an explosion ripped through the complex. He spun around, baffled from where it came from. Maybe the fascist poison had seeped even in the deepest parts of resistance. He wouldn't have time to take those thoughts any further, as out of a smoke and fire, a man in a coat and no helmet emerged, quickly approaching him. Flanked by four of the men, his face was twisted in a seemingly permanent smirk. Oblivious to the corpses lying the hall, Jonathan struggled to get up only noticing his legs had been buried in the fallen concrete of the ceiling. He only hunched as the man in a dark coat approached him, a flash of confidence and disgust in his eye. Fuck you, ya, ya fascist c- His sentence was cut short by a single shot to the head. All right, men! Thomas Holler Cooper shouted. Clear this area of any vermin or traitor scum you find, and take whatever you'd like. Today's a victory for us and all of Britain. We have much work to do. Anwar Sadat. Hmm. Funny. Yeah, let's... We'll focus on the urban areas. Well, so Mad Bomber Fitzwarren McLean may pose a sizable challenge to our government. He is a lesser threat of terrible twins. Perhaps McLean's methods result in empirical destruction of the poison spread by Jack Jones and the UFLR is far more insidious. Jones and his lot, like the rats they are, carry the plague of socialism with them. It breeds within the urban areas, infesting the minds of good British men and women and turning them against their fatherland. If we let this rot go unattained, then it shall soon spill out of the cities and engulf the entire nation. With the help of our German comrades, we shall root out this taint from wherever we may find it and exterminate Terminate it for the good of us all. I think we're actually going to end up actually we're running a little low timer wise. I was gonna say we might be able to finish up this focus tree in one go. But I'm actually not too sure. Nova Sabirsk is making some moves over here. Which is interesting to see. Interesting. Hmm. Hans could feel the rainwater seeping into his boots as they marched through the winning streets of Liverpool. They had been dispatched by the garrison to root out the Judeo-Bolshevik partisans they had heard were hiding out near the city's docks. This would be a glorious victory for Fatherland and for their friends in Britain. Yet a young man could not help but be filled with dread as they approached via docks under the cover of darkness. The men next to him were clearly bothered as well, glancing from side to side at every minor noise. Something was wrong. They could sense it. All of a sudden, their commander, officer, held up his hand. Schnell! Wait, sorry. Schnell! He whispered harshly, commanding them to stop. For a moment, all was still. And then from the shadows, a Zidanov cocktail came flying, killing at least four men. As if they'd been hiding in the dingy street itself, several armed men, bedecked with various weapons and clothing painted with communist symbols, emerged, leaping upon the German force like a Venus flytrap. The sounds of gunfire filled the night as the discombobulated Germans desperately tried to fight back. Hans could only watch as his comrades were beaten, knocked out, and gunned down in front of him. This wasn't supposed to be how that night went. They were the German army, the greatest military force in the world, the heroes of the Aryan race. 
that were destined for greatness. And here they were, being slaughtered like pigs like by mere partisans. He had to leave. He needed the reinforcements report back to the garrison so they could arrive with reinforcements, desperately trying to ignore the cries of his fellow soldiers as they claimed for, screamed for help. Hans ran back to the direction they came. Before his mind could muster anything other than senseless fear, a sharp splitting pain traveled through his head, knocking the soldier to the floor. And where do you think you're going, I lad? A voice shouted at him from above. Fuzzly hands could make out of the outline of a well-built man who was lodging a large, blunt pipe. His vision somewhat cleared and suddenly he could make out the figure out. It was Jack Jones, leader of the left resistance. The man crouched down and looked at the soldier in the eyes. I'm not sure how much English you speak, so I'm going to keep it simple. I've been fighting fash bastards before you Germans even enter Britain. We fought you then and we'll fight you here again. You lot are done. And with that, he brought the pipe on Han's head, turning it dark. Not even the hardest jackboot can keep down the proletariat. Well, the search for terrible twins drags on. Despite all our reforms, despite our efforts, despite all our advantages, the terrible twins still continue to evade us, escaping us time and time and time again. Each time we come closer and closer to finally catching and hanging the traitors, each, yet each time they escape, vanishing into the night like ghosts. Each time they vanish, we start the search again, yet the ending remains the same. Is it bad luck? Is it incompetence? Is it traitors? Only God knows. And he certainly is on our side in recent years. But we must push on and begin the chase yet again. Yet. Or else they'll seize upon this opportunity to wreck our beloved nation. But how long can we this endless chase last for? Up here in council. Interesting. this mean some sort of communist thing failure was not something Barry Domville was unfamiliar with when involved in the wild goose chase that was trying to capture Fitzroy McLean and Jack Jones after all it was a constant companion the PM found himself growing ever more tense as he flicked through a stack of reports on the status of the two partisans again and again he read the same failure result total failure he threw his stack of papers on the desk and groaned, burying his head in his hands. How on God's green earth did a deranged Scotsman and a puffed-up Union boss manage to evade them in such a way? Domville had set his best men upon them, and yet they still came back empty-handed. He was at a loss. One would think that they knew something that the government didn't. Suddenly, an awful thought came to mind. His eyes wide. No, no, it couldn't be possible. The boy had faced instability before, but never on this scale. He shakily picked up the reports and kept looking through them. The one unifying factor that ran through them all was that the twins always knew where and when the troops were coming. Jones ambushing patrols. McLean leaving a bomb behind in the barn that he was said to be hiding in. A cold shiver ran down his spine. There was no other way. Someone in the government had to be working against him. Who? Who would do such a thing? His thoughts were interrupted by two sharp knocks on the door. He stepped out of state. Come in! He barked, trying to hide the panic he'd been feeling from wherever was outside. Through the open doors came Maxwell Knight, clutching a paper pile of mineral folders. Good evening, Prime Minister. The latest load, load of reports on the twins, he said, nodding at the pile. Ah, oh, yes. Very good. Just drop them on here, Maxwell, he murmured. The knight put the files down. Donville placed his hand on his wrist. Knight looked up inquisitively. A moment passed. Maxwell, as someone with a background in espionage, I want your honest opinion. Do you think anyone in the cabinet would betray us to the twins? For the briefest of moments, something indiscernible crap flashed against Knight's face. Then he responded, I can say with confidence, Prime Minister, that I know nobody who would. Well, we'll go ahead and leave that there, won't we? I'm gonna, yeah, leave it there. Thanks always for watching, my friends. If you liked this video, leave a like. If not, feel free to just like. If you want to see more of this content in the future, hit the sub button for uploads weekdays as well as occasionally Saturdays. Check out my various links down in the description box below. Hit the sub button and the notification bell if you want to keep up to date with the uploads. Man, yeah, that's about is it.
that's about it for my friend uh, for now. I thank you all, all for watching as always, my friends. My name has been Mr. Dogboat333, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.